today's churchcheckcast.com screencast show how to make your videos better in Photoshop the churchcheckcast.com screencast show and all the churchcheckcast.com shows are generously provided for by viewers like you thank you head on over to patreon.com slash paul allen cliff that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-a-u-l a-l-a-n C-L-I-F, and you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. Every little bit helps, so thank you. Also, this show is generously provided for by Church Video School. Church Video School is my latest book, um, my fourth book actually, all about using video in the church. So if that interests you whatsoever, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash CVS for Church Video School and throughout the first week of August 2014 you'll get five dollars off the cover price so head over today and if you happen to be watching this after that it's still only 1995 and that includes a 90 short lessons on how to use video taking you from novice to uh, experience videographer in just a few short weeks. So, on my other show, Techno Babble, which is all about video, I talked about using Photoshop to enhance your videos. And so today, I didn't have the normal amount of questions that I normally do, so I thought that I would actually show you how to do it because kind of matters. So um, give me just a second to bring that up once we switch over and then we'll uh, go from there. So here's my uh, primary desktop here and I'm going to switch over to Photoshop. Okay, the first thing you should notice is this guy right here. This is the timeline. What what is the timeline you might be asking? Well, um, you know how in history class you would make a timeline of several events? Well, that's what uh, video does. is It lays out the entire video in a linear sequence so that you can hop from one place to another to affect some changes. So in order to get this to show up, what you're going to want to do is, well, first I'm going to want to, do that. Okay, then you're, so what I did was I basically, here let me undo it so that I can show you how to do it. Go to Window, and then Timeline, and then that should show up. Now it might not be this size or shape. This is, um, by the way, the last version of Photoshop CS or Photoshop Creative Cloud both have this. So, here you go. Um, you can resize it. Let me give you a quick tour. Beginning of the video is right here. Back of frame, play, forward of frame. This is volume. This is uh, some information about the video. Cut, transition, etc. So what I don't see here that I would expect to see is an end of the video, but okay. Next we have this guy right here and this changes the size of the video. But none of that really helps if we don't have a video to work on. So let's go and we'll actually grab one of the ones that needs uh, some work. Um, let's see here. Let me go over to Finder and I'll open up a Finder window here. It's being a little slow, probably because I am live streaming all this. So there we go. Okay. So I have a an external drive where I store all my videos because I'm not doing this on a Mac Pro. Well, if I was, I'd still have an external drive, but I'm doing this on my MacBook Pro. So let's go over to videos and scroll down to MISC videos. Where did I? Right there. 
Okay. Have this arranged by date modified, so alphabetical order was not my friend. Okay, so here let's do the intro to video course open two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab that and move that down onto Photoshop here. Where's Photoshop? There's Photoshop. And by the way, if you don't have Photoshop Creative Cloud um, and you want it, if you're a photographer and you use Lightroom, or if you um, just want to use Photoshop, I haven't actually downloaded Lightroom because I, I'm not a photographer. I don't even really play one on TV. I'm a videographer who occasionally takes photos. I'd say that I'm an intermediate photographer, but an uh, intermediate to a vi advanced videographer. So I haven't downloaded Lightroom, not playing with it, but what I'm the reason I bring this all up is there's the Adobe Photographer's Bundle that you can get from Adobe, and I'll leave a, a link in the notes below, or just go to Trinity digitalmedia.com slash photoshop and that'll take you to the Amazon page where you can sign up for that no harm no foul ten dollars a month so if right now you're suffering through using the GIMP or GIMP shop and you, you think man I just wish I had more tools this will do it and ten dollars a month is not very much in the developed world so I really don't see much of a reason why you shouldn't go ahead and get that. Um, it's really the industry standard and there's a reason. Adobe has done a really good job for it. It's a little intimidating at first but once you get used to uh, all this it's something that you can absolutely deal with. So I'm gonna make this go away real quick and that is still progressing so as you can tell while my MacBook Pro isn't super old uh, I could use some more RAM in it and uh, with video it takes a little longer so here we go it should be opening up here in just a second Okay. Hello, computer. Computer. Hello, computer. So, I'm not saying this is the fastest software for video. I'm just saying that it works. Okay, here we go. So, let me go ahead and I'm going to move the timeline down so that we can see the actual image. Okay? So, Here's the image, that's the first frame. You'll notice that as I scrub along in the timeline, this moves and also this uh, playhead does as well. So it, there we go. So first off, what you might notice is the color is bad. My framing is a little bad too. Part of that is because of the fact that I was doing it on my own and I was kind of in a hurry. So those are the two things that I'm going to fix. Um, so first, let me, I'm going to just go to, let's see here, layer. Where is what I want? Oh, first I need to convert this into a smart object before I do this. So this is going to take just another minute here. I can't remember where I put that. Ah, there it is. Under layer, convert to smart object. That basically makes sure, as I understand it, that the whole 
video clip is affected by what I do as opposed to just one frame, which would be bad to have one good looking frame and the rest of it ugly. So let's do that. Um, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to um, transform this. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. So I always do this with the keyboard shortcut so I can't remember where it is. Uh, no, 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 no. Image rotation. That would do the entire image. I don't want to do the whole image. Uh, by the way, just so you can see, this is a 1080p image. So let's convert this to pixels just so that you can see that while I'm thinking about it. Yep, 1920 by 1080. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, let's go to image size, canvas size, nope, edit, ah, edit, free transform. I always do command T. So by the way, I'm out on a Mac if you hadn't guessed. I hate all that background frame stuff that Adobe's started putting in there because once I went Mac, I got used to seeing the stuff underneath. So I turned that off immediately. So here we go. I have this um, transform. So what I'm going to do is I'm holding down shift right now, and I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. Um, if you make it just a hair bigger, you shouldn't notice the difference. And now I'm going to move this up so that my framing is better. So that that's better. I just need to give it just a hair more. So again, holding down shift, clicking, and dragging in the corner. Should, okay, so there, right off, my framing is better. And what I could do is I can move it over to one side, or I could center it up a little bit more. But those are really my choices. And I think I'm going to move it off to the side just to get a little closer to the rule of thirds. By the way, um, there's some confusion amongst some people about the rule of thirds. Think of it more as the guideline of thirds. You're not measuring exactly a third of the screen all the time. But the most important thing should be about at the third. Um, so because things change. You don't need to slavishly pan and tilt the camera to keep it absolutely in the middle. If it's within 10% of the third, don't worry about it. So while this about here would be the third, I'm not going to scale that up just to get my eye over that short distance. And while technically I guess about here would be the third, I'd really like a little less headroom there, so we're just going to call that right, okay? So the next thing I want to do, here I'm going to, oh, I forgot to click apply. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize that, and now I'm going to add a, um, an adjustment layer. Let's start with, well, which one did I use? I think I used levels. So let's go to levels, and that is too big. I was playing with that the other day. It defaults more to like here. There we go. Okay, yeah, this is it. So you'll notice that I have these three things right here. This is the white level, this is the black level, and this is neutral gray. So let's click on the white level to re-white balance this image. So I happen to know that these houses back here, one of these is white. So I'm going to try and find a good white. That's not bad. I'm getting better. What about here? Hmm. 
So that's a little bit better. Um, let's see if I can find some black in here, maybe in the shadows here. Ah, oh, there we go. So that's looks like a picture taken in the 1970s. Ooh, that's that's the mistake I made because I clicked on the white and I uh, the white uh, eyedropper and then I clicked in a black area. So we can always do Command Z or Edit Undo. Uh, I'm gonna just step backwards. That should work too. So let me go back there and maybe try this there that's probably the best it's been now it's really saturated but it's better so now let's add a another one let's see if hue and saturation will help us and I'm really just experimenting here um, go to saturation and let's pull the colors down just a bit see what happens. Let's move, wait, it's a little blue, so let's see what happens if I move it this way. Wow, that's special. Yeah, not exactly what I'm looking for. So, yeah, so that mutes it a bit. I um, wonder if I get this back to like zero. Yeah, that might have been a little too much. And there are also presets here. I could go with the sepia. How's that? Yeah, good stuff. Red boost. Old style. Let's see what... Old style's not horrid. Um, cyanotype, ooh, it's like a sepia with blue. Strong saturation, let's look, ooh, look at that, it looks like a painting almost. Yellow boost, let's see what yellow boost does. I think yellow boost is what I'm going to go with. Let's compare yellow boost and old style since I liked both of those. If I take old style and then I bump the saturation up, still lacking some life. Let, let's stick with yellow boost. Okay, so that's something else I can do. I can also, if we go into, I think it's image, maybe it's layer. Da, 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 da. Mask, vector mask, very clicking mask. I can do all of these things in here if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Where Where's what I'm looking for? Do you know where what I'm looking for is? Ah, here, I think it. I'm going to do this. Brightness and contrast, levels, curves, invert, posterize, threshold. Let's see what auto contrast does to it. Not much. Oh wait, it's still working. That's why it didn't do much. Yeah, that's not a lot. Uh, let's see here. Auto tone. So basically I'm just going through some of the tools that Photoshop offers me to uh, make this better. And so far, let's compare. If I go over here, see this eye, that means you can see it or you cannot. 
So before I change the saturation, it would look like that. Uh, computer doesn't like that. Okay. But this is the original. So we put that back on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. What is this layer? Where's the variations? That's actually what I'm looking for. Vector mass, clipping mass, smart objects, studio layers, rasterized. I haven't actually used variations in this version. I hope they didn't remove it for some reason. Because that was a fun tool. Um, let's see. Uh, it says it can't find it. Good to know. Variation. Sorry, this is slow to watch. Variations. Okay, so I can't find that. Maybe I'm remembering what it's called incorrectly. settings? No, that's not it. That's color space. So that's not going to help me. Yeah, I was right. That doesn't help. Hmm. Okay, and I'm about to give up on this. Type is not it. Select is not it. Filter. Because I really don't like the way that this looks. Um, so I suppose what I could do is add another adjustment layer and maybe play with the curves a bit. So let's do that, shall we? Let's start with the presets and see if there's anything cool. Color negative, just to show you what these do. Obviously not what I'm looking for. Cross process, still not it. Darker, nope. Increased contrast, no. Lighter, lighter I like. Okay, keep in mind, lighter. Help me remember that, okay? Linear contrast, medium contrast, negative, clearly not it. Strong contrast. No, nope. let's go back to lighter. Yeah, I like that. So, let's 
double check. Yeah, I like lighter better. So you can see how that is a good way to start. Now, here, let's go back here and let's, I've already scaled it up, repositioned it just a bit. Um, now let's add a lower third. So let's find a shot that looks like it needs a lower third as opposed to me holding up two fingers. Okay, there we go. So now if I wanted to make a lower third, this is uh, the one that I made earlier for, I didn't actually use this video clip, I used a couple of other video clips, but let's do this. Let's go down here to the line tool and let's change that actually to the rectangle tool. Let's use a nice rounded rectangle instead. Okay, I don't need any stroke, but I like the fill here. And let's put it like right here. So let's do like that. Let's let that crunch for just a second and let's see what we get. Okay, that's not horrid. Um, let me move that left hand a little off. Okay. And let's lower that down a bit. Okay. So that's not bad. Uh, down here, I don't think it lasts long enough, so I'm going to just put my mouse over there and I'm going to make it a little longer. So that's better. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I like the shape and everything of this, but it won't let me do what I want to do unless I rasterize it. So I'm going to do that. Basically, why, right now this is all math, so I can make that as big or as small as I want, and it wouldn't change the quality. I like how it looks, but I can't really do things to it like I would like. So I'm going to go to Layer. Rasterize. Shh. Well, let's just do rasterize layer. That should do it. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to go to the pin tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting a point up here and then stop by putting a point just below here. You'll see why here in just a second. I'm going to click over here and then about 45 degrees up do the same thing okay so that takes this boring black box and gives it these two lines so what what does that do well first we're going to go into brush and i've already set the size of this at 30 pixels and hardness at 100% and I know that because I spent a lot of time experimenting on this earlier this week. So that's where I wanted, want it. If I went too big, the lines would be too big. If I went too small, they'd be too small. I like about 30 pixels in this case. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to uh, go back to the pen tool. And I'm going to right click on that. And then there is this thing, stroke path. I'm going to, oops, made a mistake there. Almost made a mistake there. First, I want to add this mask. So that way, when I stroke the path, what I'm doing is I'm coloring black in these for these lines. And that uh, basically makes it so that the mask Right now, the mask is totally white, as you can see down here. Everywhere that it's black, it's transparent. And where it's gray, it's translucent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke this path with black. So go back to stroke path. Now we do that, and we click on brush. And when we do that, look at that. That's a better lower third already.
So I could do that. I might actually also add a gradient on there. What do you think about that? Uh, here, let me get rid of that path. I don't need that anymore. Yes, delete the work path. Okay, so I've done that. Going back here, and let's go into this gradient tool, which is right there, which is actually the same thing as the 3D paint bucket, or the paint bucket tool, uh, 3D material drop tool as well, but gradient tool is what I'm looking for here. And let's see here, what kind of gradient? Maybe a linear gradient left to right. Let's see here. It should start black and go white. So if I start over here, this should fade in to that. And I'm still on the um, on the mask. So what I expect to see is this to fade. Let's see if that does what I expect. Yeah, that's a ticket. Unfortunately, when I did that, oh, I know what I'll do. So let's undo that, Command Z for undo, and let's do a selection here. So I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to select inverse. So what that does is it selects everything but that. So basically I'm saying, don't affect this, affect everything but this. Okay, now we'll go back. Photoshop sometimes like that. Sometimes if you don't use it like crazy, you make a mistake and you just have to think, oh, that's why I made that mistake. So we're going to do that again. That's better. Actually, let's see if I can make that just a little bit longer. Maybe that'll be better. Okay, now let's Command D for deselect. Let's move that over. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. So I could do that. Now let's add some text. Let's start with my name, shall we? Now, like a caps lock on, let's type, make sure that that's white up there. Okay, good. So I was working in black. So Paul Allen, oops, forgot to space. I've only been typing since I was 18. Clifford. Okay, um, set to center. Let's see what happens when I left. Justify. Yeah, that's better. Not quite the right size though, so I'm going to Command T to transform. Actually, instead of doing that, I'm going to highlight that, go over here to this text palette, and where there's the text, I'm going to Highlight that and then just press the arrow key up a few times until I like the size. Let's see here. Let's actually see if I can make it a little closer together and see if I like that a little bit better too. So I'm just doing that same trick with highlighting and then using the down arrow. Okay, I like that. So that's pretty cool. So let's click this check mark. It says commit. Let's go up here to the move tool and I'm going to just use the down arrow instead of using my mouse just to move it a little bit. Okay. And now uh, 
I'm going to add my website in here, which happens to be my company name because I'm smooth like that. And let's do that. Take a look at what it did. I can't remember if my caps lock is on or not. And where the little LED is located, it's not clear. So why hasn't that shown up? Yeah, caps lock is on. So I just did a shift in the arrow key to highlight those two letters. So let's try this lowercase and see how it looks. T R I N I T Y T I G I T A L M E D I A dot. And let's add the comma LLC period. So that works. Let's, this looks a little close for that URL. So instead, let's bring this back to zero. Silly me, I didn't highlight it first. So that would have affected anything I typed afterwards, only I didn't actually type anything afterwards. So going back to zero here just to see. Yeah, I like that better. Now let's affect the font size. Again, highlighting and using the down arrow key. That gives us some pretty good contrast between my name and the URL, and they're about the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and commit to that. So when we go down here to the timeline, we see, though, that this uh, the trinitydigitalmedia.com was longer. So let's play with that a little. Okay, now you'll notice my name still isn't there, so let's make that longer as well. Okay, now the way it is, it, um, it's not there, and then it cuts in. So that's a bit of a bummer. Wouldn't it be great if there was a transition like this one right here? Here we go. That's technically these are not named correctly. Uh, well, I guess that's fade, but it should be cross dissolve for cross fade. So I'm just going to add a fade on each of these. and on the end. So there we go. Now I'm wondering, I haven't actually done this, so this may or may not work. I'm curious if I can just bring in that, uh, the graphic under the text, like slide that in or something. So there's this motion thing, and let's see here. Let's pan.
to the direction of panning the clip. So what happens if I negative 30? Let's see here. I believe this is degrees, not speed. Ooh, well that's all kinds of crazy. Again, Command Z. So that didn't do exactly what I wanted it to. Pan and zoom. So let's see what happens just with the default. I'm thinking that's what I want either. Let's go right before that. And then we'll hit play. This is probably going to be really stuttery. And let's see what happens. Yeah, you'll see in the frames per second down here, very, very slow. So that's because I'm streaming and I'm doing this all at the same time. And that didn't do what I wanted it to do anyway. So I'm going to stop that. And let's undo it again. And put the playhead back. Didn't undo. Why didn't it undo? Okay, we'll just step back. There we go. Okay, I guess I did two things and that's why I wouldn't undo. So instead, let's see what happens when I expand this down. So this is all real time. I haven't sped up anything as you can tell because you've been watching for a while. But um, let's not do that. Let's do this. Okay, so this is position. Leave position. Let's click on this. If memory, oh yes, this is going to do what I want it to do. Yes. Okay, so excited. Let's put the playhead, say, here. And let's add, hello, computer. Does not like what I'm doing. OK. Stop. Stop, computer. Stop right there. It's not noticing that I left up, let up on the click. Let me just do that and we'll just let it calculate for a second. Okay, so when I clicked on the stopwatch that added a keyframe which is this dude right here. Let's add another keyframe. Let's, so now let's, we can step back to the first keyframe and Let's see here. How do I affect the position? Maybe if I move it off, will that do it? Let's see. Come on. Using the move tool, why isn't it moving? Ah, there we go. Now it's moving. 
didn't know that I let go of it. Okay. Let's just do this stepwise. Let's move it to, say, here. Why aren't you moving? Maybe if I undo that keyframe, move it where I want it. Okay, and okay, so that did it. And now when I step forward, not what I had in mind at all. So I need to tweak this a little bit more. I'm going much longer than I wanted to for this video, but you can see I'm getting new Twitter followers. Okay, now I put a keyframe there. And put one here. Actually, that's just past. I might need to step back. Just doing that thing again. Okay. Okay, good. So let's just step back one frame at a time. There are 30 frames per second in HD, sometimes 60. So, we can zoom in to get a little closer. Let's do that. That makes it a little easier. Okay, so let's go back one more frame. That might do it. Because you'll see that, yeah, that's going to do it. Okay. So now you'll notice there's no keyframe. I'm going to take my move tool again, and this time I'm going to take it off the other direction. I said I'm going to take it off the other direction. So the right way to do this, by the way, is to use After Effects, but I don't have After Effects. So that makes it more difficult to do. There we go. So. I move forward one frame. Yeah, that's after that. Okay, good. Backwards one frame. Puts it here. Previous keyframe. Puts it there. Okay, so it's not absolutely doing everything that I wanted it to do. Um, for some reason, the gradient is moving. Oh, I see. The layer mask was animated for some reason instead of this. Um, but you do get the point that if we... Let's step back to the first keyframe on this. So... This starts out as 
spam comes in stays in goes out so that's the rough way to do it when I'm done you see this guy down here you can click that that says render video what it ought, really ought to be what it really ought to say is export video render and export so Let me just finish this, and then we'll go from there. By the way, when, once this shows up, there are two settings. You want to do the uh, Adobe Video Encoder, otherwise you'll get a, a series of JPEGs, which is less than ideal for this. So right here you have two choices Photoshop image sequence or Adobe Media Encoder Adobe Media Encoder is what you want to do if you've got audio and if it's a um, if it's a video you can uh, change the presets here QuickTime H.264 change the quality change the document size etc so you have a lot of control here um, and you can do a range you can don't have to do the whole shebang you could just do part of it so I'm not going to click render I'm going to click cancel and that's basically how you can do it you can tweak from there and get a lot more going don't forget if you like this video here let me go back to me Just a second. Okay, there I am. Okay, if you like this video, don't forget to share it with friends, subscribe either on YouTube or over at trinitydigitalmedia.com, and um, if you have already subscribed here let me actually just bring up the list of options for you if you've already subscribed uh, you can watch the previous episode next episode other shows that I do from time to time and by from time to time I mean Monday through Friday 11 a.m. Eastern 8 a.m. Pacific 3 p.m. UTC during the summer 2 p.m. during the winter because of the annoying time change thing and uh, please to subscribe to this show as a podcast go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe to watch this show live Monday through Friday churchtechcast.com and to if you've already subscribed and you just want to leave a review head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash iTunes reviews really simple I don't need any I don't need war and peace just a sentence or two about what you like about the show and four or five stars that will help me get the word out until next time this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com <laughs>